Uh, it's pretty funny at 35 past the hour, a live look at Capitol Hill as the sun is just about to come up over Washington. Let's talk about the Super Committee. With just six days left to make a deal, lawmakers are scrambling to find a way to slash more than a trillion dollars from the U.S. budget. The 12 member panel continues to spar over the best way to reach a deal, a partisan split described by the committee's two co chairs. I'm still waiting for Democrats to actually solve the problem. Put something on the table. If you don't like the Republican plan, if you don't like the Rivlin Domenici bipartisan plan, what is your plan to solve the crisis and ensure and ensure that the committee does not fail in its duty? I am still hopeful that the Republicans will see their way to bringing to us a real revenue package, and that's what all of us are looking for in terms of fair and balanced. All right, so this is where Steve Ratner comes in. They have until midnight next Wednesday to reach a deal, and you have some charts uh, explaining where the money comes from, the pots they're pulling from, and why this is so difficult. Let's start with uh, tax revenues versus tax expenditures, and explain as much as you can sure. what the issues are here. So first of all, we're now talking about revenues. The Republicans have put revenues on the table for the first time in a limited way, and the question is where would those revenues come from? Nobody wants to uh, raise tax rates per se. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this chart, you'll see that the total tax revenues that we get from the federal income tax are a trillion dollars a year. There are another trillion dollars a year that are in so-called tax expenditures, which you might call loopholes, Joe might call them deductions, he mm -hmm. might cause them, call them uh, ways to get around taxes. This is where people want the money to come from. Everybody believes in tax simplification and getting rid of some of these deductions. And if you were to literally cut this in half, which is not going to happen, you could literally cut the tax rates in half and still end up with at least as much money, maybe more. So in this area of tax expenditures is where people are talking about getting the revenue. So let's take a look at what some of them are, because what's surprising about it is that the big money is not where you necessarily think that uh, the money is, is coming from. The big money is really in some things that people are probably not going to give up so well. So for example, the fact that your health insurance is not taxed, right, right, right. the fact that your mortgage interest is deductible, the fact that your retirement plans, your 401ks and so forth are not taxed. And those are, those are huge numbers. These are almost $100 billion a year each that you could save if you were to get at this. The one that uh, gets a lot of attention is capital gains and dividends, because Joe likes to talk about Warren Buffett's tax rate being 17%. Right. The reason his tax rate is 17% is because of a special 15% rate that he pays, and anyone else for that matter, on capital gains and dividends. If you got rid of that and, and everyone had to pay 35%, you'd raise almost $80 billion a year, $800 billion over 10 years. Bowl Simpson proposed to take a whack at all these in one form or another, not eliminate all of them, but to start to cut into them in order to raise revenues and lower the tax rates. Of course, the Obama administration has not endorsed Bowl Simpson. It's not on the table right now. But this is really where the money could come from to make a meaningful debt, uh, dent in the deficit. Now, the stuff that people like to talk about on this last chart, uh, in fact, is really not large numbers. So when you talk about things like uh, corporate jets, uh, which, yeah, we should get rid of the uh, deduction for corporate jets. We're talking about $300 million a year. When you talk about the special treatment that hedge fund guys and, uh, and private equity guys get on their taxes, you're talking about a billion eight a year. Even oil and gas is $4 billion a year. So these are, these are fun to talk about. We should deal with them. But this is not where the money is going to come from. I mean, um, no offense, but I don't think people c consider this fun to talk about. I think some people might not even completely conceptualize what you're talking about. They don't even know what they're arguing. Um, there are some polls that show that a lot of people don't even understand what the super committee is doing. How much of a dent would this make in the deficit if all of these best case scenarios came through and everything was able to be cut the way that you would describe it in a best case scenario? The super committee needs to find a trillion two of savings. If you literally just got rid of this special uh, tax rate on capital gains and dividends, you would raise close to a trillion dollars over 10 years. They're huge numbers. They're, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying there's a lot of money in these things. There are a lot of places where they can get it. Okay. You know, you know, quickly, Tom Coburn, Republican, Oklahoma, cranky, conservative, mm -hmm. honest conservative. Plain spoken. Yeah. He's got a study that he's just prepared in the Senate, Subsidies of the Rich and Famous, and he came up with the annual average of payments and tax breaks 
to the super rich, people making over a million dollars, he has it totaled up as $30 billion a year on, on things that you just pointed out. $30 billion a year. Yeah, it's, and, and of course, it's huge money. And uh, it would be great if we could get at it as part of a deal to simplify the tax code, lower tax rates, but also raise revenue. There has to be more revenue in order for this deal to happen. <laughs>